80% of success is psychology, 20% is the mechanics. The problem is most people live in their heads. They have their dream, they have their goal, they have a desire, they get hyped up about it, they get fearful about it, and they just don't execute. Let's imagine for a few moments what our life would be like if we could access 20% of our brain's capacity. It is not the movement of the clock that produces the newness of life. It is the movement in your mind. Your old friends won't understand it. Put it behind you. You're going to hear all kinds of things said about you. Throw it behind you. The enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Action is the key to everything. Even if you take the wrong action, if you keep changing your approach, you can succeed in anything. It's an illusion that knowledge is power. Knowledge is potential power. Knowledge is trumped every single day by execution. Don't get me wrong, I'm a strategist. The right strategy can save you a decade. But if you don't have the right psychology, you'll learn the strategy and you won't apply it. So psychology is the driving force that creates an extraordinary business and an extraordinary life. I've never met a person who was not successful that didn't have a great amount of self-discipline within their life. Friend, listen to me loud and clear. Do not pick your friends that are enabling you. Pick some friends who empower you. Please don't enable me in my brokenness. Please do not enable my negative thinking. Please stop enabling my excuses. Please stop enabling my vicious cycles. Please quit enabling my laziness. Please quit enabling me just going, huh, that's who I am, I guess. I don't need to be enabled. I need some friends who will empower me. Empower me to think a new thought. Empower me not to give up. Empower me to go further. Empower me to go harder. I am not a victim, I'm a victor. Self-discipline and being able to perform and being able to keep your life on schedule and being able to keep commitments and promises and meet deadlines is essential to success. Understanding and knowing that we can move from where we are, that we can begin to design the kind of life that empowers us, that gives us happiness, that enable us to be on top of who we are, knowing that as we begin to explore new horizons and new vistas in life, that as we begin to, to focus on developing ourselves, activating the thinker in us and dis disciplining and putting on hold the emotional part of ourselves, it's not easy, but through practice and practice and practice, practice makes improvement. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. You never hit a state of perfection. You're always bigger than what you do. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice and practice. You'll get better and better and better. Either you're going to control your time or your time's going to control you. Either you are going to dictate the terms of your life or you're going to be somebody who reacts and responds throughout their life. Just go follow your dream, man. Go make your life happen. Identify your God-given gift and go and get your life. Quit tripping because you don't have what a group of people told you you need to be successful. Quit letting people tell you the route to success when clearly God created you to be different. Just go that route. Quit tripping because you don't have what he got. You ain't finna be what he is. So one of the tips that I've covered before but not enough people implement that I promise you is a quality of max out performers that relates to their time is they control it. They do not react and respond. They dictate the terms of their life most of the time. And my present situation does not define my potential destination. Life doesn't happen to me. Life happens for me. So spare me your sympathy. I don't need any of it. What I do need is your strength. What I do need are your strategies. What I do need is you to sharpen me. I need you to empower me so I can step into the future God has called me to. Someone say, check your circle. Because your circle is defining your future. Behind every moment of adversity in your life, two things will happen. There is a lesson and there is a blessing. Every moment of adversity 
has those two things that come with it. Pain always leaves a present. Every time you're in pain, it leaves a gift behind. Because God always has a gift behind every moment of pain that you have. When a man leaves you, there is a gift behind your leaving. Sometimes the breakup is the blessing. See, sometimes you got to get rid of a man in order for God to give you the man that you really need. So every time something bad happens, you just have to wait on the blessing and the blessing. It always happens. The number one thing probably killing your dream isn't your hater, isn't the feedback, isn't the criticism, right? Isn't the concern. It's the energy you expense and expand by worrying so much. It's your addiction to other people's approval that will ultimately kill your dream. Build up your self-confidence so this addiction to what other people think about you is eliminated or reduced in your life. The fact of the matter is this, what other people think about you is none of your business. I vote that you learn from these people, that you learn how to forget about the past, that you learn how to ignore people that are negative, that you learn to control your vengeful ideas, and that you learn to move on into the future where you're going to meet better people and better times are going to be had. That's what I would recommend. Don't worry about these people from the past. You won't have the strength to move forward if you're weeping over what's behind. It takes a lot of energy to think about the past. We live the hurts, wonder why it didn't work out. That person you lost, if they were supposed to be here, they would still be here. Uh, none of us, none of us can afford to have a life that is controlled by someone else or a life that is basically controlled by our emotions. I learned many years ago that there are two kinds of people. There's the type of person who says, I, I'm going to wait till I feel like it before I do it. And then there's a person who says, I've got to do it so that I feel like it. One will never get anything done because they're still waiting to feel the moment to move. And the other person says, no, I need to move. And then I will begin to feel the moment. Dr. Carter G. Woodson said, that if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. If there's no door, his very nature will demand one. And I think that in many cases, governments and religious institutions have really unwittingly have crushed the dreams and aspirations and, and the visions that people had of themselves. Not all, but a lot of them. And I think it's incumbent upon the individual to take responsibility, to develop yourself, to expand your mind and your vision, to seek out experiences. And I suggest to you, one, work on yourself. To me, I think there are three pillars of, of what's required in order to, to carve out your place in this global economy. There are many steps, but there are three that I think that's indispensable. One is working on your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The second is uh, having a mindset and willing to discipline yourself to make the sacrifice to engage in ongoing self-study for self-growth and development, developing your communication skills. I can hear Mr. Washington now say, Mr. Brown, develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. Nelson Mandela said, if you speak from your mind, you speak in a language that a man can understand. But when you speak from your heart, you speak in his language. When I started on this path, that was what my goal was, was to change me. Given my circumstances, I think that you know, psychologists say that we create a mental blueprint between the ages of one and five, that between that time, we determine what's available for us and what's not available for us. Regular people make regular money. If God made you exceptional, go be exceptional at whatever it is. That's how you become. People pay for expertise. They pay for exceptional people. They don't pay regular people. If you focus in on being regular, you're going to have a regular life. It's nothing wrong with that. But if you aspire to something more than regular, 
you got to go be extraordinary. The difference between ordinary people and, and extraordinary people is one word, extra. If you put extra on top of ordinary, you become extraordinary. You, you ain't got to be like everybody else. If you do hair, go do everybody's hair. If you cut grass, cut everybody's grass. I'm telling you, man, you can be highly successful without a college degree. I don't have one. If there's something you once envisioned and now it's real, it's because you didn't just envision it, you brought so much emotion to it that now it's in your life. It was once a dream, it was once a goal, and now it's in your life. You may take it for granted now, hopefully not, but it was once just a vision. It may have seemed impossible at one time, so how did you do it? You started with a concrete vision of what you wanted and you focused on it continuously, didn't you? Wherever focus goes, energy flows. You don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily. They take time. They take struggle. They take relentless pursuit day in and day out. That's what it takes. That's the thing. Success and failure are generally slow processes. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours. And hours turn into days. And days turn into years. And in those precious seconds, you are either building or you are decaying. So make every second count. There are some areas in your life where the stocks and the boxes are checking off and they're completely on fire. And then there's those areas in your life where the stocks is not so on fire. And it takes a real man and a real woman and a real friend and a real mentor and a real therapist or psychiatrist to expose those areas in your life where the stocks are low. You have all the potential in the world and I'm going to love you and hold your hand and have your back and rock with you because you got all the potential in the world. That's where the magic is. The magic is not in the outcome of the win is when someone recognizes the potential in you and the fact that you have all that it takes to win. I have been working my whole life and what I didn't understand by being determined to chase something, by being committed to it and what commitment is, commitment is staying true to what you said you were going to do long after the mood that you have set it in has left. You see people think commitment is saying yes, I'll do it on the days when it feel good. But I've been committed to everything that I ever started in my life and I never stopped and I never quit it. And so by being committed to everything that I started, I finished it. It built a certain type of spirit. It built a certain type of mentality. It built a certain type of individual. And so now I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. I couldn't lay in the bed even if I wanted to. I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. I had too much sweat equity in my life and everything that I was doing. I understood the process is more important than the product. It wasn't about the outcome for me. Whether I made it to the NFL or not, that was inconsequential in God's plan for my life. But I was going to fall in love with that process because I understood by falling in love with that process, it was going to turn me into a machine. You see, a lot of people need things to get motivated. A lot of people need a little extra money to get motivated. A lot of people need, you know, whatever the case may be, a little bonus to get motivated. I don't need anything but breath in my body and life.